Welcome to the Quick Flicks video series for Generations. I'm Lindy Goodall of Lindy G Embroidery, and in this video, we'll modify a design we created with the Christmas Elements building blocks. In a previous video, we made this design and saved it as a building block, which you can see down here. Now we'll modify the design so that it looks like this. And what I've done is I've replaced the ornament with a different one. I've used this one, the hollow one and I've added some text and reshaped it so it flows and shapes around the design. So let's start by deleting this ornament, drag out the one we created before, ungroup it, and delete the ornament. Then we'll drag out the other ornament, move it into position, resize our window, and I want to move it so that it's behind everything else. So I need to move it in the sewing order. So I'll go down here. It's the bottom of the list. As you add new elements and generations, they always get added to the bottom. So I select the frames, right click, and choose Move to Top. And that moves them to the top of the sewing order so that they sew first. Now you can see that they sew behind. The next step is to add our text. So we'll click Insert Text. I've typed in Noel. I'm using Arial Black at a size of 15 and we'll just click OK. Move it into position and generate. You can see that that doesn't look all that amazing so let's do a little reshaping. With the text selected I'll click the reshape tool and I'm going to slide down here and pick number 114. When you apply reshaping it adds some control nodes and you can just move those around and reshape your text. So we'll move these around a bit. And when we're happy, press enter. Then we need to click generate. If you press generate first, it won't apply your changes. So it's kind of hard to break the habit of always clicking generate after you do a modification but remember to press enter first and then generate. Also a point to note is that at this point your text is no longer text. Uh, you can't edit it, you can't go in there and change it to say joy because now they're just objects that look like letters. And you can see that we have one frame for each letter or each object. Let's change the color. I'll left click the color chip in the color bar, click on this color chip, I'm going to click yellow so I can get kind of a starting point and pick a kind of gold color and click OK. And there's our design. Let's select all, control A, group, and we'll save this as a building block. So we'll go to accessories, building block, Save Building Block, navigate to the folder, and what do we call this other one? We call this Holiday Ornament 1, we'll call this one 2. So I just clicked on the previous name and I just changed the 1 to a 2. And if we click off and then click back on, see there's my other ornament. In a previous video, I mentioned building blocks can do double duty as monogram frames. So let's turn our ornament into a monogram background. We'll delete this, drag our ornament back out, and go to Accessories, Monogram Background, Save Background. And we'll pick an area to send it into. So you might want to save it into Holiday, see if we have a Christmas one. So we'll just save it into Holiday, and we'll call it Ornament. And now it's been saved, and if I go to my monogramming tool and click Holiday, you can see there's my ornament. We'll look at monograms in another video. Now the reason I got rid of the other pieces is that whenever you create a building block or a monogram frame, it uses everything on the screen, even if you only have, say, the ornament selected and the holly and the bow 
unselected. It moves everything into there. So you need to be sure that you only have what you want to be as your building block or your monogram frame on the screen by itself. Would you like to learn more about generations? Would you like to make your own designs and no longer be dependent on just what other people make? Learning this program and how to digitize is not that difficult, especially if you have a structured course that leads you step by step from basic auto digitizing to full manual digitizing. And that's exactly what I do in the Learn to Digitize training course. If you'd like to learn generations with me, just visit learngenerations.com for full details on the course.